Good morning. This is Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to go on a journey together, a very exciting journey to uncover the solution to a mystery. I'm a lucky guy. I have a range of 3D printers that I use as part of the Dr. Vax channel. I have three printers that I use very often as my everyday printers. A Monoprice Ultimate 2, great printer, fully enclosed, print volume is a bit small. A Prusa i3 MK3, top of the line, consumer, prosumer grade printer, excellent at pretty much anything you throw at it. And I have an Ender 5, a Creality Ender 5. And the Creality Ender 5 is wonderful because it's very easy to hack at, to modify, to upgrade. The Monoprice Ultimate 2 and the Prusa are more difficult to upgrade. So on the Ender 5, I have added an all-metal hot end. I've switched the extruder. I've switched the Bowden tube to Capricorn tube. I've switched the print surface. I made a lot of changes, new firmware. But one thing I always notice is when I print something, the same thing on the Ender 5 and the Prusa MK3, the Prusa is anywhere from a third to a half faster. So it takes dramatically less time to print things on the Prusa. And I'm not sure why. I can make the Ender 5 go faster, but with the, it seems the Prusa is always a faster printer. I'm going to be going on a trip with my wife, and so I print some luggage tags, and I apologize for the blue painter's tape, but I thought it was best not to broadcast my home address. And so when I printed these, this dark orange one was printed in Matter Hacker's Build PLA on the Prusa. This light orange one was Matter Hacker Build PLA on the Ender 5. This one took about an hour to print. This one took an hour and a half to print. So stay tuned and let's discover the reason for this difference by learning something together. Folks, if you're new to this channel, before we start on our exciting journey, um, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. If you find what I talk about meaningful, useful, interesting to you, there's a button down on the corner there. If you click on that button, it'll give you an option to subscribe. To begin unraveling this mystery, we're going to look at the slicer, the slicer parameters, then the overall architecture of the printer, things we can change to create the identical environment so that we can see what happens if we print at the exact same speed on our Ender 5 that we print on our Prusa MK3. Let's begin by looking at this picture together. This is a picture of Cura and the results of slicing this print for the Ender 5 you'll see that I've sliced this object in Cura. It's Cura version 4.2.1, and it claims it will take an hour and 27 minutes. Now, Cura is notorious for underestimating print times. In version 4.2 and later, it's getting much better. So let's say an hour and a half or so for this print. If I go to my Prusa, using Prusa Slicer, and I slice the same print, let's see what we get. In the Prusa Slicer, it claims this will take one hour and one minute. Now, I can tell you from actually printing these, those times are pretty accurate. So this took about an hour and a half, this took about an hour. If I look at the quality of these, and we'll look at the quality a little later in the video in more detail, they're very, very similar. So why is this so much slower? So the first thing I wanted to do is eliminate the variability of Slicer. So I sliced the same print in Prusa Slicer using a profile for the Ender 5 I downloaded from Thingiverse that I will link below. Using this profile, you'll see that it is actually a little slower in the Prusa Slicer than in Cura about an hour and 35 minutes. 
So it wasn't the slicer inherently that was making the difference. So the next thing I needed to do is I needed to dig into what are the differences, the fundamental differences between an Ender 5 and a Prusa. And the biggest difference is the style of the extruder. Let's take a look at that. The Prusa is represented by the extruder shown on the right. The extruder, the component that pulls the filament off the filament spool and loads it into the hot end is right on top of the hot end mechanism. That means that it has very good control over pulling the filament up and down. When it attempts to pull it up or down, it moves right away. There's very little play in the system. If we look at the picture on the left, that's a Bowden tube setup, which is a setup of the Ender 5. In that case, the extruder is pushing the filament through a tube and then pulling it back through that tube. That means there's a fair amount of play. Depending on how tight the tube is, how close it is to the filament, there may be more or less play, which is why upgrading to Capricorn or a better quality Bowden tube makes a difference. But it's a system that's less rigid. There's more variability. What does that mean? It means that retraction distances, when you pull the filament back, have to be longer, maybe even slower, on a Bowden-based system to get the effect of pulling the filament back so there's less pressure on the nozzle to eliminate stringing. So let's look at the settings in Prusa Slicer for the Ender 5 and the Prusa. You can see here that the Ender 5 is retracting five millimeters of filament. The Prusa is only retracting 0.8 millimeters. So the amount of time it's going to take for the retraction, and speed also has an impact here. The Prusa is retracting a bit faster than the Ender 5. So every retraction, when you go to move the nozzle for a travel without extruding, is going to be a bit longer on the Ender 5. But these prints, this particular print, you know, it's a relatively small print. Yes, there will be retraction between the letters when the letters are printing, but how much could that really impact the printer? So I looked for another set of parameters in the slicer that would be significantly different between the Prusa and the Ender and how those will affect print time. That brings us to this next picture. This is a picture explaining what the acceleration and jerk control parameters do in a slicer. When you go to move the printhead on a printer, it starts from a stop, then it moves, then it stops again. But it doesn't actually go from zero to full speed immediately. If you attempt to do that, the printer will move the stepper motors as fast as possible to do that. It's going to cause a lot of vibration. And then when you get to the end, if you just stop, it's going to cause more vibration. That's going to impact the quality of your print, causing ringing and other artifacts on your print. So instead, you gradually ramp up acceleration to get to the travel speed, and then you gradually slow it down again. That means you slow down your print speed before you hit the end of a move. Those two factors are going to impact both print quality and speed. So let's look at what those look like in Prusa Slicer for the Ender 5 and the Prusa. So on the left, we have the Ender 5, and you'll notice at the top, the overall speeds are very similar. Uh, perimeters are 60 millimeters per second. The Ender 5 is a bit slower when printing small perimeters, like our letters. And in some cases, such as travel, it's actually a bit faster. So the overall speeds are similar. We could match those up, but it doesn't look like they're that much different. In fact, first layer speed is, quite, is a bit faster on the Ender 5. However, acceleration control is set to zero in the case of the Ender 5, and has values for the Prusa i3 MK3. 
That means the Ender 5's ramp to speed is going to use the values that are in the firmware since the slicer is not overriding those values. On this particular printer, I'm using the TH3D upgraded firmware, which uses the same basic default as the Creality supplied firmware. If we look at the Marlin configuration files, the source code, we can see that the values are basically set to 500 millimeters per second and 800 millimeters per second. Let's look back and see how that compares. Well, the acceleration values on the Prusa are at 800, 1250, 1000. So the Prusa acceleration values are quite a bit faster. But how can I be sure that those are the values being used by my printer? Well, I can hook up a console to the printer on the USB port and ask the printer to tell me what values it's using. Let's look at that. So here I hooked up Octoprint. And we see here that the values are in the values that are in the firmware, 800, 500, 800, 500, and 5,000. 5,000 being the maximum acceleration for the extruder, which basically says unlimited acceleration. So that seems to be the difference. But are there any other values that could impact this? Yes. Remember, we accelerate up to speed, but then we decelerate ahead of time. If we look at the machine limits page, we'll see the maximum that this machine is configured to be able to go to. And the Prusa slicer, even if in other places you set the values above this, will limit it to these maximums. The Ender does have a slower maximum jerk than the Prusa. That means it has to slow down a little bit earlier. Um, those seem relatively close though, much different than going from 500 to 1250. So, let's do an experiment. I'm going to take and go into the Prusa slicer and put all the values that were set for the Prusa i3MK3 into the Ender configuration. So we're going to increase those values from 500 and 800 to 1000 and 1250. And let's see what impact that has on the print. So I loaded this onto an SD card and all of these prints were done from SD cards to limit variability. Here's what happened. Now, I began to panic. I thought I broke my printer. I re-sliced the image again. I loaded it again. Same thing happened. I went to the front console. I tried to manually auto home the printer. Same thing happened. I figured I really messed up my firmware. So what did I do? I actually downloaded a new copy of the firmware onto my printer. Now my Ender 5 has been upgraded to have a bootloader, so I can use the Ar Arduino tools to upload the firmware. So I downloaded a new copy of the firmware to my printer, same thing. Then it didn't make sense because I knew I was running on solid firmware it's unlikely, it didn't make sense to start with, that the print should have caused this. I looked around and a cable had come loose. The cable on my X stepper motor had come loose. So what's the lesson here? Don't panic. And before you look at anything else, when major things go wrong, just check to make sure your cables haven't come loose. So then I reprinted. And in fact, the print times were almost identical. So the changes to acceleration made a dramatic impact on the print times of these printers. So if I need to print fast on my Ender 5, I can. But if I look at the print quality, it was not the same. So on this next screen, we'll see a picture of three prints. One, the top two pictures are printed at the default settings. The default setting for the Prusa and the Ender. And you'll see the print quality is really rather similar. However, the bottom print is printed with the faster settings with the new acceleration settings on the Ender. And if you look at the email address, you'll see the print quality has degraded significantly. Why? Well, overall, the components in the Prusa are a higher caliber of component. 
across the board. And so those minor changes, minor differences in the individual components that Prusa selects for their printer versus Creality selecting for their printer, they all add up to the ability for the printer to accelerate and decelerate more rapidly while minimizing vibration and allowing for consistent print quality. So what's the conclusion? Well, sometimes, surely not always, but sometimes you get what you pay for. The Ender 5 is a spectacular printer. And if you're willing to print a bit slower, I believe you can get every bit as good as the quality you get on a Prusa i3 MK3. But if you wanna print faster at higher quality, you need to pay more for a printer that's built with more robust components. And it doesn't stop at the Prusa. If you're willing to spend thousands of dollars, there are printers that will print about twice as fast almost as the Prusa with equivalent quality, but these are industrial grade printers with significantly enhanced component capabilities, tolerances, and precision. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this video with other people, leave your comments. I know Creality versus Prusa is a very high energy discussion in the world of YouTube. So I'm always interested in your comments. I believe both printers are great printers. It depends on what your needs are, whether you pick one versus the other. And most importantly, Let's continue to learn things together.